Hey, what is going on everybody? My name is Payne, and this is the channel where I review anime shows and movies from years past and present. One of the goals I had when I decided to review all of these Studio Ghibli movies and break them down into what I think all these movies mean, what their hidden meanings are, is that I also want to introduce some films that anyone who is a fan of movies like Spirited Away, Princess Mononoke, or literally any other Ghibli film would also like. And the film I'm about to talk about today is a film that unfortunately has been overshadowed for a very long time over here in the United States and wasn't really talked about until a few years ago and hasn't been really talked about since. So I thought I would put my two cents into what I think is a film that should have as much attention as, let's say, Whisper of the Heart or The Cat Returns, where it's on most people's lists for favorite Ghibli films and for a few people can undoubtedly be their favorite Studio Ghibli film. And with that out of the way, here is the one, the only, Only Yesterday. Only Yesterday is a drama anime film directed and written by Isao Takahata, produced by Toshio Suzuki, and was made by Studio Ghibli. It was released in Japan on July 20th, 1991, and was released by G-Kids, with a dub, on February 26th, 2016, and once again, not Disney didn't release it. And it is 118 minutes long, or 1 hour and 58 minutes long. The story was partially based off of a manga of the same name that came out in 1982 that was published by Tokuma Shoden, Ghibli's distributor, that followed the daily life of an 11-year-old girl named Taeko in the year 1966. The manga was meant to be nostalgic towards anyone who was living in Japan during that time, hinting at certain shows, movies, songs, and fashion for the time, but when Takahata decided he wanted to adapt the manga, he ran into a little problem. Because that it was an episodic manga, it had no stable plot for it to be adapted into a movie, so Takahata decided to add a couple of things of his own in order for it to have a story at least. First, since the manga was told in the form of a memoir, he decided to have the story told in the movie in the form of an older version of Taeko set in 1982, the year the manga came out. Which meant that the parts of the story where it's set in, let's say in this case present day, were all from the mind of Isato Takahata and not the manga. So this is where I get into the story, so for anyone who hasn't seen this movie yet, you have been warned of spoilers. You've been warned. The story follows 27 year old Taeko in 1982 as she takes her first extended trip outside of Tokyo to visit her older sister's family in a nearby countryside town. On the way there, she begins reminiscing about her time in the 5th grade in the year 1966, during a time where everyone left for their families outside of Tokyo, and she didn't. As the movie progresses, Taiko keeps having extended flashbacks about the frustrations and small pleasures of her childhood, and with the help of her brother-in-law's second cousin Toshio, wonders if her stress-filled adult life is what the young Taiko would have wanted for herself. The movie ends with Taiko facing her true self and deciding to stay in the countryside instead of uh, returning back to Tokyo, and the ending of this movie is easily one of the greatest things I've ever seen in any Ghibli film. To be specific, the movie ends with Taeko on a train to Tokyo when she decides to go back to Toshio and live in the countryside. And while she's trying to go back to, to, to Toshio, her 10 year old self appears along with her classmates from 1966, helping her <laughs> go back to Toshio, symbolizing that that's what her 10 year old self would have wanted, all while the Japanese version of The Rose by Bette Midler started playing as the ending song, which could not have been any more perfect. After understanding what she's been thinking about and going through throughout the entire movie, seeing the ending was one of the most tear-jerking and emotional scenes I've ever seen. It's not just in Ghibli films. Now, from what I've seen, there were some people who didn't think too fondly of this movie because the plot was too slow or, you know, they didn't understand what the movie was about. And you know, I could see that. Instead of having Hayao Miyazaki throw in some fantastical elements into a Ghibli film, you have Isao Takahata at the helm, who is known for making his films have a sense of realism and in some cases hits more close to home. And for only yesterday, this is no different because the movie is intended for, you could say 18 and up. Uh, this is not a movie intended for children, but it does have its perks. The animation, of course, is of usual Ghibli quality, being that it's very well detailed and fluid, but there was something different about it this time. What Takahata and Studio Ghibli did for Only Yesterday was that they put more detail in the characters to the point where you didn't have to know what they were saying to know how they felt, to the point where it almost felt lifelike and had weight to it, completely making me forget that the entire movie was hand-drawn. Now. Come to think of it, because of how mundane it looks compared to other Ghibli films, one would have argued that Only Yesterday could have been made as a live-action movie, but 
That's what makes the animation all the more impressive because unlike a live action film with 3D human people, animating it instead gives it a better advantage in terms of world building and the combinations of ideas that would only improve on the film instead of degrade it. And considering that this movie is all about detail, the end result was absolutely stunning. The acting is also really good as well, both on the sub and the recently released dub, which stars Daisy Ridley of Star Wars fame, Dev Patel, and Allison Fernandez. And I gotta give most of the credit to Takahata and the script here. He managed to write a script that was so natural that even with dialogue that doesn't pop out at you when you first hear it, the eventual meaning of the dialogue does which in this case is nostalgia. Obviously, no matter what we're doing, we're always pushing forward and life never stops or even slows down enough for us to even think about the past. But there are times where we need to ask ourselves, how are we to maintain the self we want to be when we are, ourselves are constantly adapting and changing? How does the way in which we interpret our past determine our future? And in the film, it is demonstrated by how Taiko struggles to think of her own future. But that then triggers the memory of her, it says here, 11 year old self being a brat towards her friends and family, making her ask herself, when did she give up on some of her dreams? It's never really identified in the movie, but it doesn't really have to be. It's something that has to be dealt with in one form or another by everyone we know, and because of that, this movie hits home for me. Because as I'm going through the process of senioritis, I often reflect upon my younger self and would wonder how he would view me today, how the people that knew me then would view me today. And while I'm thankful that I'm nothing like the person I was when I was in elementary and middle school, and you have no idea how, ha how happy I am for that, I often think back and wonder how did the person back then shape me into the person I am today? Which, again, makes the final scene of the movie with Taeko going back to Toshio with her old self and old classmates following her again was one that you just can't go through without tearing up at least. The soundtrack is another part of the film that really helps with the film and also has a little twist to it. While Kat Hoshi, who did the music for the film, made the score very peaceful and fit very well with the very calm tone that the film has, what he also decided to do was add an Eastern European theme to the film as well, very similar to what Joe Hisaishi did with the soundtrack to Kiki's Delivery Service, only that Hisaishi composed it all, and what Koshi did was add some local folk music from countries like Hungary, Romania, and Bulgaria. And all I can say about it was that the placement of these songs, it oddly works. And once again, the ending song that's basically The Rose by Bette Midler, it's just... It's really, really good. <laughs> the only thing that I could say that's like a negative towards this movie is the pacing, and by that, I mean that there were some times where, especially in Taika's flashbacks, it would go a little too slow, but, you know, it only happens a few times, so, you know, considering that it's a two hour long movie, it didn't really annoy me that much. So, to cap this off, is this movie perfect for everyone? No, again, it's not. It's an adult drama film. It's not gonna be perfect for anyone. If you are mainly into movies with explosions and car crashes and action, this is the exact opposite. But if you get the chance, if you give this movie a chance and experience what this movie has to offer, maybe this one will tug at your heartstrings too. And with that, I'm going to give only yesterday a 9 out of 10. So thank you guys for watching this review video, and before I sign off, I do want to do this again uh, in terms of that I want to make this, to pick the next three shows that you guys are going to pick. Uh, for me to review in the next video. So we're gonna be doing this again. Uh, there are some shows that I took off. There are some shows that I put back on. Uh, the one show that I really remember taking off is Made in Abyss, only because the movies are coming out and I just didn't think it would be enough. I uh, didn't think it would be the right time to talk about the series. And I also added a few shows too, such as, uh, what is it? No Game, No Life, Spice and Wolf, To Love Rue, Jesus Christ, Skip Beat and Fooly Cooly. Uh, I feel like I should wait till I watch Fooly Cooly Progressive and Alternative to review that one, but hey, why the hell not? Uh, so we are going to, let me just turn on the volume on here for a second. All right, volume's on. So let's see what three shows that you guys are gonna pick. I honestly don't know what's gonna happen here. What is the first one? It is Tsukihime. Okay, there are two types of people when it comes to this show. One, there are people who know this show for what it's collaborated with, and then there's the people who don't know what this show is. 
Back in May, I started reviewing Fate Stay Night, and then I found out that there was a show called Carnival Phantasm in which Fate Stay Night collaborated with another show known as Tsukihime. Now, I want to review Carnival Phantasm, but it feels... But I feel like uh, this is a show that I should really talk about first, just to get some context to people who've never seen the show before. So, uh, Tsukihime is the first show. There's a there's a few there's a few shows that have some exceptions. Next one. Oh no way! <laughs> all right. Oh, you know I'll go with that. All right. That that is a show I've been meaning to talk about for a very long time. Uh, it's just yeah, we're already past the ten year mark. <laughs> I already missed my chance on it. Uh, but there's nothing wrong with reviewing it now. So, Toradora is now on that list. I know a lot of people who say that's their favorite show. And the third one... Okay. Okay, you know what? I, I'm fine with that as well. Uh, so yeah, there are three shows now that uh, you guys get to pick. It is Tsukihime, Toradora, or Tanaka-kun is always listless, which... To give you a quick like 10 second synopsis, it's about a guy who's like very tired all the time to the point where he does not want to do anything ever. Uh, but you know, of course there's a reason why I put it on this wheel. I think it's, uh, I do have a few things to say about it. So uh, instead of making a straw poll at the end, uh, or at least down in the description, I decided that I'm going to put the three shows on an eye poll, which is on the top right corner of the screen. Uh, this makes it very easy for anyone who wants to vote, and uh, I, I can't wait to see what you guys' results are. And with that part out of the way, thank you guys for watching this Only Yesterday review video, another Studio Ghibli review video. If you like this video and, and want to see more Ghibli review videos, hit the like button down below. If you want to see more anime review videos in the future, you can hit the subscribe button either on the screen or down below, and if you want to see any anime review videos from the past, there are videos on the screen in the description or down on my channel. And with that, my name is Payne, I'll see you in the next video.